So as I said, we would do some activities, um, exercises from the book um, to help you understand. You'll actually do some of these, um, a different example for homework, but let's go over this. So um, the problem from the book is exercise 2-6, and it says classify each cost as variable or fixed with respect to the indicated measure of activity by placing an X in the appropriate column. Remember, little hint up here, fixed costs um, are costs that remain constant in total regardless of the change in level of activity within a relevant range. If fixed cost is expressed on a per unit basis, it varies inversely with activity. Remember, a variable cost varies in total in direct proportion to the changes in the level of activity. Um, a variable cost is constant per unit. Okay, so we're going to think about these situations and decide whether it's variable or fixed cost. So the first one is the cost of an x-ray film used in a radiology lab at Virginia Mason Hospital in Seattle. And the measure of activity is the number of x-rays. Can we trace the x-ray film to each x-ray? I would say yes, it's easily traceable. And does the number of x-ray films change with the number of x-rays? Yes. So it varies. I'm going to say that is a variable cost. And I'm going to put an X here. I'm actually going to make these centered. I'm really crazy about my cell looking really nice. Okay, so let's go on. Number two, the cost of advertising a rock concert in New York City. Does the cost of advertising change with the number of tickets sold? Not specifically, right? Advertising is a period cost, and it's also a fixed cost, because... You're going to advertise. The idea is obviously to sell more tickets by advertising, but the advertising doesn't change if you sell one. If you spent ten thousand dollars on an ad on a newspaper ad, it doesn't matter if you sold one ticket or ten thousand tickets. It's a fixed cost of ten thousand dollars. We're only with fixed cost. The cost of renting retail space for a McDonald's runs restaurant in Hong Kong. Does that change with the number of hamburgers we sell? Total sales at the restaurant? No. Again, this is a period cost and it is a fixed cost. All right. The electrical cost of running a roller coaster at Magic Mountain. The number of times the roller coaster runs. Well, actually, it does matter, right? If the roller coaster is not running, then we are not paying an electricity bill. Same thing that happens at your house. If you don't leave the lights on or turn on other things, the TV, things like that, that use electricity, then your electrical bill goes down. Therefore, it is variable cost. Property tax paid by, by your local cinema theater. Is that based on the number of tickets they sell? No, right? Property tax is just like on your home. It doesn't matter what your income is. It is a fixed amount. What about the cost of sales commission paid to a salesperson at Nordstrom's store? Well, based on the total sales at the store. Sales commission is paid based on sales volume. Therefore, it is variable. If I sell, it's similar to um, a real estate agent. If they sell a home, they get paid commission. If they don't sell a home, they don't get paid commission. So that is a variable cost. I'm just going to make this... Um, I'm going to freeze the pane if I can remember how to do this. Freeze pane. There we go. So we can see this as we go down. Now, what about property insurance on a Coca-Cola bottling plant? No, that does not... Let me read this section too. Freeze pane. Freeze pane. Um, property insurance, uh, based on the number of Coca-Cola cases that we produce. No, that's not variable, right? That's a fixed cost. <clears throat> All right, well, what about the cost of syn synthetic materials used to make a particular model of running shoe? Does that matter based on the number of pro um, running shoes that we produce? Sure, if, I, if I'm using a product, a material, inside the shoe, if I produce one shoe, I use one of those materials. If I produce 20 shoes, I use 20. Therefore, it's variable. Um, the cost of shipping Panasonic televisions to retail stores based on the number of televisions sold. Sure, if I ship one television and it's $7.95, then I just pay $7.95. If I ship 20 and it's $7.95 per television, I have to do more. 
therefore that cost is a variable cost. The cost of leasing an ultra-scan diagnostic machine at the hospital in Paris, based on the number of patients um, who are scanned. Now, I'm leasing the machine per month, similar to rent, lease. Um, does it matter if I see one patient or 50? No. The answer is no, because I leased it for a set amount of money. Therefore, it is a fixed cost. Now, we're going to move on to exercise 2-7 in the book. And one of the things in exercise 2-7 um, is now that we have this, we want to also talk about direct or indirect. When you're doing your Make It project, you're going to actually verify direct and indirect, whether it's a product cost or not, whether it's fixed or variable. So it's important to understand these concepts. And you can apply this to any type of business, okay? So a hospital, they're not manufacturing something, right? This is more like a service business, but they still have direct and indirect costs. So um, Northwest, Hospi Northwest Hospital is a full-service hospital that provides everything from major surgeries and emergency room care to outpatient clinics. Required for each cost incurred at Northwest Hospital, indicate whether it would most likely be a direct cost or an indirect cost of the speci speci specified, I can't speak tonight, um, specified object by placing an appropriate X in the column. Remember, an indirect cost is a cost that cannot be easily traced, easily and conveniently traced to a specific object, whereas a direct cost can be easily and conveniently traced to a specific project. Okay, so first thing, wages of a pediatric nurse, can that be traced to the, pedi the cost object is a pediatric department? Can we break out wages of, pe of pediatric nurses to the pediatric department? Absolutely, that can be traced easily, right? So, that's an easy one, direct cost. Now, prescription drugs traced to a particular patient. Absolutely, this is how we bill the insurance company, correct? And I'm sure all of you get a bill if you get a prescription. So yes, prescription drugs can be traced to a particular patient. Heating the hospital. <clears throat> can this be traced to the pediatric department? No. This is an indirect cost. It costs something. You could break it out based on size, but it's not easily traceable. So that's what they do. They, they call it overhead instead. The salary of the head of pediatrics. Can that salary be traced to the pediatric department? Is that easily and conveniently traced to that object? The answer is yes. So that can be a direct cost to the pediatric department. Now, the salary of a of the head of pediatrics to a particular patient. Now, remember, it's easy to break it out for the pediatric department, but is it easily to trace the head of pediatrics to a particular patient? The answer is no. They would basically divide this salary. It would go into overhead when we're calculating costs, and they would divide it, you know, over the number of patients there. The hospital chaplain's salary to a particular patient. Again, it's not easy to chase, chase the trace that person's salary to a particular patient. Lab tests conducted out by an outside contractor um, to a particular patient. Sure, if they send my blood work away to, a, to an outside vendor to have it tested, they will know how much that costs. So yes, it can be. And then lab tests by an outside contractor to a particular department, whether that's pediatrics or emergency room, yes, they'll identify who ordered that, and it can be easily traced to the department or a patient, for that matter. So those are both direct costs. So this was an example of direct and indirect and fixed and variable costs. You will do activities um, assigned, on you, uh, assigned to you on Moodle um, similar to these.